Hey gorgeous, welcome to my Central Indiana small backyard garden. I garden in zone six and I grow vegetables, flowers, all of the things. This is actually my fifth year growing vegetables. I have a whole kitchen garden, as I call it, area back there with raised beds, containers, green stacks, where I grow lots of veggies and lots of flowers as well. So today I am going to show you a few things that are growing there, a few setups that I have how things are working so far. And here in central Indiana, we're getting ready to hit the 90s, mid 90s here in a couple of days. And I think we're gonna stay there for about a week. So really had temperatures really soon. And my game right now is just keeping everything water nice and, and moist so that when the temperatures hit, they're good to go. Okay, to give you a little bit of a better idea of the layout right here, uh, where the camera is, is the south side. And all the way on the back of my kitchen garden is the north side. So the sun comes from that way, illuminates everything, and it sets that way. So, so this area behind me gets plenty of sun because this is really the only spot in my garden where I can grow vegetables because it gets the most amount of sun. And it's, it's nice and, and opened. Right over here, I have two main raised beds these are small raised beds they're really long but they're about three and a half feet wide and they're the ones where i have grown a bunch of my tomatoes most of my tomatoes for most of the years have been growing in these beds in one way or another the only thing that i change with those tomatoes is how i trellis them i have been playing with a few a few systems for the past few years this year i'm trying a new system i'll show you here in a minute but these two beds are basically full of tomatoes, lots of herbs, lots of vegetables, lots of flowers. I used to have a raised bed all along that side, but I find out that it gets way more shade and my vegetables didn't do that well. So I switched all of that and I added curtain steel planters where I have boxwoods growing at the moment. And my hope is that one day those boxwoods are going to create a nice green evergreen wall. So it's an, it would be a nice privacy. Um, after that, I have another bed over there on the side, which is carrying a lot of my raspberries. It's my uh, berry patch, I call it, and other uh, vegetables. And, and over here next to the garage, I have another uh, collection of curtain steel planters as well. You're going to find out that I love curtain steel planters. And I have lots of vegetables as well. On the back, more raised beds. And that's where I have my three green stacks. I added those kind of pretty new last year, that little area uh, really not being used and it was just wasted space. And so I don't have a lot of raised beds and my area isn't that huge. It is bigger than most, but it's really smaller than a lot of people. But I grow a lot of things here. I grow a lot of vegetables. I experiment with what I can grow, what grows well here in central Indiana and I am pretty new at this. I am pretty new at growing vegetables, that is. While I have been a gardener for a couple of decades now with flowers mainly, vegetables are a totally, totally new game for me. It's getting really right, really quick. Let's start all the way on the back. This bed right here was the original bed, the first bed that we ever started with that was originally on the east side of the house and we moved over here when we redid all of this back in 2020. If you have been here for a while, you know that I took this space that was literally not being used. This was, I believe this was the original driver of the house and we just cleaned it up. We made a few raised beds and year after year we had been adding more raised beds, more growing space, more trellises. Um, and I am really, really loving the idea of growing lots of food, not all of my food, but lots of food that I can use during the summer and maybe even save some for the winter. About a month ago, I added this small but cute bird bath to this back of this kitchen garden. And my goodness, it has become the spot for the birds to just get together. I have to change the water here every single day, sometimes even twice a day because it gets really, really bad. And I mean, I don't mind the birds just hanging out here. The air right here on this bed has a little bit of everything. I have, well, right now I only have four tomatoes that I am trellising with the tomato roller hooks. This system that I'm using this year is called lower and lean, which basically requires the tomato plants to grow as a single stem plants. And I made a video about that a couple of videos ago or so. 
if you want to check that out I'll put the link on the description here but so far I am really really loving how the system is working for my tomatoes and also for some cucumbers that I have that I'll show you here in a minute but the rest of this bed half of this bed towards the back is where I'm growing my asparagus the asparagus are really really loving the area this year they were amazing last year but this year they really really took off and as it happens I have a lonely uh, sunflower volunteer growing there it's on the side of the bed so I decided to just let it let it be for this year and hopefully it won't bother the asparagus I do however have to take some time and come here and weed uh, the area where the asparagus are growing because it's it's definitely um, being invaded by a bunch a bunch of weeds here on this trellis I have my kuka melons I have two kuka melon plants I also have some marigolds these are some marigolds that are new for me and so far I don't see any buds on them just quite yet uh, but I think they're going to look pretty amazing I do have a squash plant there that I really really have to secure to this pole right here that I put in the middle that's basically how I'm going to be growing these guys this year it worked really really well for me last year so I'm going to repeat that I have some celosia some blue victoria salvia i have some sweet peppers that are showing signs of lots of fruit i have some basil and i also do have some chives there i know some people feel funny about growing chives in the raised beds um i think that i can handle it on this side i have this uh, taller raised bed that i have mentioned a few times that I think that I got some really bad soil for it and I know it was completely my fault because I went to my local um, hardware store and I grabbed a bunch of the cheapest bags of garden mix and compost that they had and I think that that really um, didn't give me a good start. So I noticed that some of the plants are definitely looking sad and, and I didn't just notice this this year with, with the plants growing here. As soon as I put some flowers and vegetables there last year when it was nice and, and fresh, my plants just struggle. And they didn't struggle like they were growing slowly. They struggle like they had been poisoned with something, if you know what I mean. So my idea is that I am going to let whatever can handle uh, growing here this year, and then I'll probably change this in the fall or whenever I'm, I can do it. On another video, I share how I installed these trellis. This is just like a standalone trellis that I secured to the bed. And I added three, well, I have about six there, uh, cucumbers. I really need to trim those. But they are really, really taken off. They're really liking it there. Um, if I had planted tomatoes or even basil, they wouldn't be doing that well here because that was my experience last year. But cucumbers and sunflowers, all of those sunflowers that are growing our volunteers seem to um, not mind the, the soil quality here. This is the area right here that I redid this year. I added a bunch of those green stacks there that weren't here last year. And as you can tell, they're, they're really, really thriving. The green stack on the back, the closest to the camera, is my salsa theme green stack where I have tomatoes, I have peppers, cilantro. Cilantro is going to flower, obviously. I have a bunch of uh, chives. I also have some serrano peppers. I think I said that already. But I also have some marigolds. Now, for those of you wondering, where, where is the garlic? Where are the onions? Well, obviously I can't grow that at this moment in this time in this green stock but I do have onions and I do have garlic on another side of my raised beds that I'm going to show you here in a bit this green stock right here in the middle is just just for strawberries and I'm loving it I added a bird netting to protect the strawberries from the birds and it's working really, really well. The way that I have this netting set up, I am not able to turn it, but that is okay. The plants don't seem to mind not being turned. And to be honest, they get plenty, plenty of sun here, as you can see. 
This lonely guy right here, this green stock, is the one that I just empty from having broccoli and a bunch of brassicas and lettuce and some violas and it's, it's looking very very fresh. I didn't take it apart to add new plants. I just removed the plants that were there. I added more potting mix to the areas where it needed it and I direct sow a bunch of seeds and I planted some seedlings that I got from my local Menards. I added this zucchini and I am really, really uh, excited to see how it grows. I am definitely going to help it with some sort of support um, and I will let you know how it does here. I added some shishito peppers, some sugar tomatoes, and I direct sow a bunch, a bunch of zinnias. And the zinnias are, some of them are, are coming up and some of them I think that the birds got to the seeds before they could even show up, but I mean, that's okay. And the sun is really out and about, so it's getting really, really bright here. Back here, I added those Corten steel planters. These are the new addition to the back of the kitchen garden. And I had some sugar snap peas there growing. I recently pulled those out because they were done, but currently, I have basil, cilantro, green peppers, I have some squash, I have some jalapenos, more cilantro, more basil, and these planters are going to be amazing here in a month. They may not look like a lot or they are full with things, but it's a continuous growing. I already harvest a bunch of sugar snap peas from these planters and I feel like that's really, really the idea with having a kitchen garden. It's not going to be, it's not going to be 100% harvesting from the time that you start your harvest. There are always going to be areas where you need to remove plants, add more plants, direct sow some more. And this is really something that I have learned throughout the years, having a vegetable garden that some things are just going to die sooner than others. And, um, it's just a game. It is, it is just a continuous, continuous uh, work in progress. I also added those small containers on the side of those cortensil planters. And I think that I did a video on how I planted these planters. And let me show you. The plants that I have here on each pot are exactly the same on the other. And my goodness, they are loving it here. I have marigolds, lantana, Coleus, Cosmos, and I even threw a Victoria Blue Salvia there in the middle, and they're they're looking amazing, you guys. I just love these containers. I do have everything in my kitchen garden with irrigation. I have drip irrigation installed. I got that done last year, and everything is set up. We have been getting a lot of rain here since the spring and my plants are loving it. And because of that, I haven't had to really get my irrigation going on a routine. And normally what it happens is that even though I have the irrigation set up, it's not something that I have it done on an automatic time. I don't have it set up on Mondays and Fridays. When I need it, when I know that the water, when I know that the garden needs some water, I come here because I have an app on my phone that I have hooked up to my, to my timers outside. I just set those up for however long I need to. I have two zones here because it's really a big area, at least in my opinion. So I have divided in two areas and that helps me to do something else while the garden is being watered. Moving on from those containers that I have there, on the opposite side, close to the garage, I have a raised bed all the way towards the back where I have some goodies growing. And I also have some bags of compost that are going to be going where I have my garlic. And the garlic is going to be coming out here pretty soon, here in a couple of weeks or so. And I already have the compost and the plants are going to be going in there, ready to go. This raised bed is full of cucumbers baby sugar watermelons. I have all of the onions growing there. I have uh, two lovely sun sugar plants that are volunteers. I actually had tons of tomato volunteers on that bed, but I decided to use lead to be, and we'll see how they do. My idea is that they can go and crawl in front of this bed. Um, I don't know how that could work, but I am not planning to give them any support uh, at all. So. Hopefully they do okay. That flowering plant that you see there is a 
cilantro plant that was also volunteered early in the spring and it kind of fell down and started blooming and this plant right here right now is is loving loving life and apparently i have some tools there as well this is just me i leave my tools everywhere and sometimes they just get buried with all the growth um, it happens the cucumbers and the sugar baby water or baby sugar watermelons whatever they're called are being trellised using the lower and lean system as well just like my tomatoes and so far i am i'm really liking this you guys this system has really allowed me to do a lot more planting a little bit closer together and this is my first year trying it so i will let you know at the end of the season how everything worked out we go a little bit here on the side towards the middle and front of the this this trellis that I have here you can tell that I have all of that beautiful beautiful garlic and it's going to be getting ready to be harvested here in, in two weeks or so I planted this garlic last October I have two different types uh, German white on the left and music on the right and I cannot tell them really apart I feel like they all look like they could be the same the same variety I don't know if different varieties of garlic do look a little bit different once they're grown this is really my first time growing garlic here in my kitchen garden one thing that I will say is that I am going to be planning exactly where I'm going to be putting my garlic uh, for next year this year because I really would have liked to have access to this bed a little bit earlier. Um, it's not too late to plant uh, other plants right now and I do have a lot planned for this bed but uh, being right here in the middle I feel like I could have uh, maybe planned better but that's definitely something that I am going to add notes to my garden journal. Uh, make sure to choose a better spot for the garlic. Overall, things are really, really doing really well. I cannot complain. I feel like the, the rain that we have been getting here in central Indiana has been really helping everything grow. And I probably have only had to use my irrigation once. Um, and that's because the, there wasn't rain coming for like two or three days. And I felt like I needed just a little bit of more water for my plants. The two main raised beds that I have here in the middle are about the same as far as what plants are growing in them. In front of those two raised beds, I have two containers. They're also on irrigation because I do not want to have to worry about skipping some areas. If I have everything being watered at once, I want to make sure that everything, every single corner where I have things growing is being covered. This container right here has a couple of nasturtiums and a couple of tomato plants. These tomato plants are the ones that I am not worried about trimming. I do not care if they grow one or two stems. Um, and I think that so far for how, um, I mean the container is not super small, but it's also not super big for having two tomato plants. So, so far they're doing great and my hope is that they can continue growing up that trellis. I will definitely have to help them to get them attached to that arbor, but I think they're doing, they're doing great. The other container has also a bunch of nasturtiums, which by the way, they're loving it here. I was a little bit afraid that with being in the full sun that we're going to um, struggle a little bit. I mean, we're still, we still haven't gone through through the worst part yet as far as heat and the 90s are coming we'll see how they do but i mean so far these guys are doing amazing and right there on the back i have some black eye susan vines i only have three plants that are growing but they are clearly thriving there and those vines i do not have to help them at all they are doing their own climbing. These two raised beds, like I mentioned, have 
about the same plants, the same seedlings. It's, they're just mirrored from one to the other. On the outside of these two raised beds, that's where I have my tomatoes growing. I have a total of 10 tomatoes on each side, and I am using the lower lower ending system for that. So I set up a frame, well, my husband did, but I help a little. He set up a permanent frame where to hang those uh, tomato roller hooks. And like I said, I did a video on that. So if you wanna watch it, uh, go back a couple of videos and you'll see that. I have been here every day because I'm here every day anyway. So I am just checking on my tomato plants, making sure that those suckers don't grow. I am removing those because the idea for that for that technique of trellising the tomatoes, indeterminate tomatoes that is, is that you wanna have just one single stem for the tomatoes. You do not wanna uh, leave anything just growing wild. So, so far, like I said, it's going great. In the front right here, I have green beans that I direct sowed and they're, they're really doing well. As you can tell, I don't have everything mulch just quite yet. Um, I waited a little bit too long to put the mulch down and because of some of the plants are already grown it's hard for me to use come in and you know apply the mulch and if you're wondering this is the mulch that I use I started using this pine needle straw from tractor supply last year and I absolutely love this actually most of my mulch that I have already in my raised beds I only use this for my kitchen garden. I don't use this for my ground flower beds. But most of this mulch is the one that I saved from last year because you can easily remove this and you can easily reapply it. So the next step for me is just coming here and very careful apply that mulch to the areas where I, where I still need them, especially with the hot temperatures coming. Definitely wanna make sure that the soil is not exposed, that it's nice and covered so that most of the moisture is not just, you know, disappearing. I also have some ginger in some areas of these beds. I think the ginger is doing all right. This will be my third year growing ginger and I wanna see how well it does in different areas being planted. Uh, the first year was amazing. I had it in huge, huge containers. Last year, it was all right. I had it in a very, very small area. Uh, it didn't really do as well. And this year is the first year trying them in raised beds. So I will update you, of course, in how ginger does for me. I have oregano, some uh, variegated sage. I have a bunch of marigolds. I do have that lonely dahlia plant that I definitely need to um, add some support right about now. I have some ruvecchias. And the ruvecchias are definitely smaller this year because I started them a little too late and they were tiny. When I transplanted them here, they were growing in a small six cell container. And I mean, they were tiny, tiny plants, but they are loving it here. So I don't mind having to wait a little bit longer for the blooms. I have lots of cilantro. You can tell that I love cilantro because I have it, I have it everywhere. I also added some uh, solar lights from Hostlink USA. I will link those below. I have these in my stepping stone path and I, I really like how they work and I, I am adding them to my kitchen garden this year. I have peppers, I have more ginger, more herbs, uh, chives, yes, more chives. I do have a marigold plant there, some dill that is blooming. I have some parsley. And on the back corner of the beds, I direct sow some zinnias. And these zinnias are doing really well here. I do have to come and pinch them because they are definitely uh, big right now. They're definitely uh, getting to that point where I can just leave a couple of, I can leave a couple of sets of true leaves and uh, they will just do even better. And I also have to thin them because I put two or three seeds on each little area where I had them and um, they are definitely, they could definitely use some space. And right next to the zinnias, that's where I have my Malvar spinach. And she's finally, finally waking up and taking over. You could probably see it better from this side. I added a trellis. Um, I added a trellis for, for those spinach, for those Malvar spinach. And the vines are quickly, quickly reaching the top of that trellis. Um, I think that I'm just going to have to deal with it when the time comes because I know they're going to be reaching the top really, really quick. 
And as you can tell, I don't have to do anything as far as helping them um, grow along the trellis. They will do their own thing. This is my first year growing Malabar spinach. And people either tell me that they love it, that it's very close to what spinach tastes like. And some other people just tell me that they don't really like it. So I will let you know either way. I have more herbs, more ruvecchia growing on this side of the bed, and I have a whole line of marigolds right next to my tomatoes. I love to do this. I love to add marigolds to right where I'm, I'm planting my tomatoes. Um, I don't normally have to deal with things eating my tomatoes, but if there were, I think that the marigolds will help, maybe. And the other raised bed, the opposite side of this uh, kitchen garden, is basically the same idea. I have the tomatoes growing on one side and I have green beans, herbs, dahlia, cilantro, all of the things growing. The only thing that is different here is that I have a squash, which I really have to uh, trim and I have to attach to that pole so they can grow nicely there. And I also have some tomatillo plants right there. I have two tomatillo plants and they're already loaded with tomatillos. I just love, love this morning light when everything is starting to wake up. Everything here is, is doing really well. I don't have anything really struggling. The front of this bed, I have a small collection of things. I have lots of nasturtiums. I have a squash plant that is already giving me squash. I haven't harvested my first squash yet, um, but I know that pretty soon I am going to be so tired of squash that I won't even know what to do with it. I have a couple of peppers there. I have peppers kind of everywhere. And I also have lots of, uh, lots of ginger in there. This is probably the area where I have most of my ginger planted. Again, I don't know how it will do, but fingers crossed. Back there, I have three straw flower plants. I'm excited to see how they do. I definitely know that they're going to need some support because those things are just going to flap once they once they grow really, really tall. And right here in the front, that's where I have uh, beets growing. I start my beets indoors about two to three weeks before I am ready to take them out. And I start them in bunches. And that's basically the idea for, for these beets right here. And for the rest of this bed, starting right there, all the way towards the back, it's where I have my raspberries that I planted from uh, Beirut this spring. In one of my last videos, I mentioned that I wasn't sure uh, how well these raspberries were doing because um, they don't look like they're growing a lot. There is definitely growth, but they don't look like they're growing that much. But some of you said that, but some of you commented and said that that's definitely very, very a good amount of growth for being the first year. So I am happy about that. I, this will be my first year also growing raspberries. I have never grown raspberries. I have two different varieties here. I also did a video when I, when I planted those. I will link that if I can remember it in the video's description. And again, the only thing that I have to keep an eye on here is to, uh, for the weeds. Uh, the weeds are going to be the end of me, um, but it doesn't look so bad. I really hope this video doesn't get too long. Uh, this is the last part that I'm showing you. Right behind me, this is where I have my Corten Steel planters. These guys are huge. I installed these last year in the spring and they were amazing. I had lots of nasturtiums, lots of fruit, lots of vegetables and lots of flowers that are growing and they, they were thriving. I do have a rose there. I have a David Aston Bath Bathsheba rose and it already bloomed. It's um, something is eating it. I have to treat it. I am the worst when it comes to roses, um, but I'm going to look at it. Everything here is on irrigation as well. 
So if I'm out of town, if I know that my, my garden needs water, I can easily turn it on, like I said. But let me show you these beautiful plants that are growing, like this watermelon that I have growing right here. I have two watermelons growing right here at the very, very corner of that planter. These planters are 26 by 26, they're square. And gosh, they look so small because these plants, these watermelons are, are definitely, um, they're kind of taking over. They're growing towards the back, which it could be a little bit tricky because this is the path where if there's construction going on, um, if there are, you know, things being moved from the back of, of the, um, the garage to the front, this is going to be the path. Um, and it, my watermelons are gonna be right there. But we'll see how, how I can get them um, protected. I also have lots, lots of dahlias, I have the celosia that I started from seed. I have basil, lots of herbs, lots of marigolds, peppers, and I have all, all of my sun sugar tomatoes growing there. And actually the sun sugar that I show you growing in the green stock was a cutting from one of the suckers of these plants. I decided to put that cutting in water for a couple of weeks. And when I was ready, it went into the green stock because I had the space, but that's really something that I like to do here and there. I actually have a few things right now in water that when that garlic is out of there, I am going to uh, pop those in there for getting more tomatoes. Please ignore the condition of the garage. We live in a fixer upper and the garage is definitely uh, in the last, at the very, very bottom of the list, two things to fix. Uh, those sun sugar tomatoes there, I have a total of four, two on each section. And I added some cattle panels to support them and they're already, middle of June, they're already reaching the top of, of that trellis. So it's going to be interesting trying to contain these guys because they're monsters. These are probably, no, most definitely my favorite type of cherry. It is sweet. I know some people don't really like sweet tomatoes. I don't know why, but I love sweet tomatoes. Um, and these cherry tomatoes, sun sugar tomatoes are definitely, definitely the sweetest. It is so, so bright already, but I do want to show you this little section because it is making me so, so happy. This is where I planted lots of those millet grass that I started from seed already have lots lots of spikes going and the birds are loving this you guys i do have a small wooden really really tall raised bed right there this is where i had my ginger last year and it didn't like it i think it's um, not deep enough and just too small for for my ginger but i do have a cherry tomato there i believe that's black cherry i gotta double check but i believe that's black cherry and I don't have support for it. The plant is just kind of hanging down and I'm just going to let it be. That's all it's going to do. And I have lots of peppers there, more nasturtiums. I have some cannas growing on the back. Um, we'll see how they do all together here. Um, but to wrap it up, this is pretty much everything that is growing here. Even, even that horseradish that my husband and I have been trying to kill for the last three years now note to yourself if you plant horseradish in your property you will always have horseradish in your property just keep that in mind and another thing that is making me so happy are all of these nasturtium volunteers i had nasturtium here on these containers last year and of course i had lots of seeds that they drop and my gosh i'm loving them Again, because I don't know how protected they're going to be. I'm just going to let them be just like the watermelons and hopefully they don't get stepped on by people walking on this path. I really hope that you enjoyed this, this quick tour. Hopefully it was quick. I don't know how long it's going to be. But if you have any questions of the things that are growing here, uh, I'm going to try to add a bunch of links on the video description to how I did things or what I'm using or anything that I can think of, check there first. But if you have any questions about something specifically, let me know. Things are looking amazing, you guys. Fingers crossed for that, those 90 degrees um, days that are coming that they don't kill half of my stuff. I, I think they're going to be fine. Things are pretty, uh, pretty established by now, so fingers crossed. Thank you for being here and I will see you on the next time.